What's up guys? Three guys off grid here. Nick and Levi. Ben's not with us today, but we're going to show you a pretty sweet mealworm video. Levi's going to go into it because he's the expert. I'm a newbie. I'm a, I'm a novice, so I'm going to have a bunch of questions, probably much like you guys have. So, um, Levi, take it away. Awesome. Okay, yeah, I've done mealworms for about 10 years now, and I've done it in every way imaginable, whether it be racks, sifting, all the different processes. And unlike what you're what you've seen on just about every other video it really is cheap simple and incredibly small space as far as what you need to actually produce them in so just to give you a total about nine I think nineteen dollars is about what my current setup costs for is that the, for all of these or just one that's for the bins uh, starter of the worms and for 50 pounds of wheat bran eight bucks and this lasts about six years you showed me that bag and I was thinking I called them I was like should I go to the store and get some wheat bran I'm thinking those little bags <laughs> and they're probably about almost eight bucks yeah seven seven bucks for the organic stuff and yeah people use like organic rolled oats and stuff and they're hard that's hard to scoop them out wheat bran is the easiest thing it's made for horse feed and, and it, yeah it's just a massive bag and I mean, if you have a thousand worms, this will last you a month. Two cups? Well, yeah. Roughly. Roughly. I mean, these guys have been in here for several months. And so, yeah, we've got <clears throat> three different mealworm bins here. And I've got probably 12 uh, at home. And what these are, after the years and years of doing mealworms, I found you don't need to sift them out. You don't need to separate them even at all. Uh, they will just... Do their own thing, figure it out, and uh... weren't you saying? Okay, tell them. You're talking about how, you know, if you do your research and you've probably been watching a lot of videos online, you'll probably notice that people have some fancy setups, right? They look a little costly and high dollar because they are. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but Levi's kind of found a solution for that, so we're gonna go over that today too. But yeah, yeah. So instead of all the the chaos and hours uh, spinning separating the beetles from the the mealworms or the pupa if you just let them do their thing like these ones are full cycle right here and so you've got some of the you know the worms die that don't make it and then there's the mealworms that are in there and those guys are you know several weeks old and here we've got some of the beetles and most of the beetles just like to hide underneath. Whoa. Yeah, so that's because the moisture from this is on the paper towel, and they're just sucking up all that moisture. Wow. And people say you need, like, dark bins or stainless steel or stuff like that. I've always used clear just to see what I see what's going on and throw in a little piece of towel, but the worms will still go out, and you'll see some of them are bearing down. Yeah. That is them laying their eggs. So they come out and breed and with the other beetles. They go down to lay their eggs. They come back up. The mealworms go throughout. And I had a bin that was a full, a full tub, a clear tub, about three inches deep. For six years, I never cleaned it once. Wow. I would throw a piece of like potato in or fruit. They'd devour that for moisture. They had their full life cycle going on. I'd add more wheat bran and all of their castings ended up maybe half an inch to an inch thick at the bottom and then I had hedgehogs and other uh, pets and I just throw the hedgehogs right in there like six hedgehogs they just devour as many beetles mealworms whatever it didn't matter there were so many of them uh, they just devoured it till they couldn't eat anymore and then I would put them back in their little hedgehog cage <laughs> and then just let them do their life cycle because they lay hundreds of eggs in their lifetime because the beetles live for you know a month or two and, and these beetles are busy yeah, anyway, they're in busy. Two weeks of them popping out of a pupa, they're laying eggs. And so you can actually let the your pets or whatever, chickens, whatever, eat all the beetles and just leave, you know, thirty or forty behind to lay all the eggs and and they'll do that and then you'll end up with again thousands of mealworms. Because won't they go the beetles, won't they go and eat the eggs too? Only if they're really, really void of Oh, moisture. Food, moisture okay and food yeah like a lot of the videos it just drives me nuts you'll see them and they're they're sitting in like 
a quarter inch and they sift off the powder. They're sitting in a quarter inch of stuff. They're like digging and mixing everything. And you can tell like on this, since I'm not mixing it around, it looks like virgin um, wheat bran. Hmm. But on the bottom, if we can get this, that's all the castings. It's just complete powder. Hmm. And it's separated. And here you can actually kind of see the line. I mean, it's just a fine line and then it's just the wheat bran on top mm -hmm. and it's settled more here than here wow so if you really do want to separate it without any sifting at all just tilt it up like that all the all the castings will end up on one side all the clean wheat bran will end up on the other and and your your animals will eat all the big guys and hmm. yeah okay so the other thing we're going to do today is we're actually going to make a new mealworm, what, farm or what would you yeah. call it, colony? Yeah. I don't know what you would call it. Oh, a new bin. A new bin for me. I have a bunch of fish at home that I'd like to feed them to um, and have kind of kind of just what we see here. Everything in all cycles here where we can kind of get a rotation going and um, so that I can stop purchasing food for my fish and start feeding them some high protein replacement that'll just kind of have fun on its own right yeah absolutely and the cool thing about doing it this way these all these tubs are a dollar at dollar tree yeah let's go over the prices real quick and show people what they're cool so i found these tubs at dollar tree all of them both sizes and i did actually find a little rack that just happened to be the right width this way and then their smaller ones are the same width and so i do just set them on a rack but you just have a little, I just cut a hole with a pocket knife. So a dollar for the tub, a um, couple scoops of wheat bran out of the $8 massive mega bag. Um, if you wanted to, you could buy just a hundred mealworms at a pet store. And then once they turn to beetles, they'll lay hundreds of eggs. And so then in, in, in a matter of maybe four months, all of a sudden you just have thousands and thousands of mealworms. So question, oh wait, yeah. go through for the novices like me, Go through their life cycle. Okay, so the different stages, the the actual eggs that the beetles will dig down and lay are the, the size of like a piece of sand, but they're super sticky. And so what they'll do, they'll actually stick to all the dust and even the castings, um, which is a good reason to leave the castings there because the eggs will get, the, they'll cover themselves in it just naturally and that protects them actually from the other uh, beetles and everything from eating them because they're covered in the castings and that's just nature doing its thing so another reason not to separate so you've got the eggs they come out and they're tiny little mealworms and let's see if we can find any little little guys and so they'll come out and they'll be a little tiny mealworm and then when the mealworms then get bigger they'll be about that size and then after that they'll turn into little pupa and these guys can't do anything but wiggle. <laughs> and then after that, you get the little beetle. And then they just go around laying eggs. Hmm. There's all the stages right there. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the experiments I did on them most recently, I was curious about, well, I got super worms. And so the super worms are just absolutely like gigantic it's a totally different species they do not cross uh, breed or anything like that even though they look the same basically have the same care the <laughs> biggest difference is you have to separate them completely to force them to go into a pupa from a larva if you don't do that they just stay as a superworm until they die hmm. and so that's the benefits of millworms then yeah so they'll they'll turn into pupa amongst all the beetles and everything mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, yep. You can just leave them in a tub forever. Like you said, six years. and Yeah, you just give them moisture every now and then, and uh, they'll do their whole life cycle over and over. There'll be a little bit of all of them living together. And that's what these two are. So, yeah, we we're talking about forcing them to pupate. And in an ice tray, they can't climb up this far because there's nothing for them to crawl on. And what it does, which is you wouldn't normally see it because they kind of burrow down before they turn into a little pupa. But I'll just pour these guys out real quick. So right when they're about to, they will molt 
away their hard shell and turn into this super I, mean, I gotta be careful because he's super soft and his legs are going useless and he'll shrink down and turn into a pupa but you can tell he's already lost his like hard exoskeleton there hmm. like compared to these two guys and these guys are already going dormant getting ready to turn into a pupa and so he's trying to look to bury down because he's vulnerable at this point because he's so soft Oh yeah, you can tell. So it's so like there's the color difference. Kind of white or clear, translucent-ish. Mm -hmm. And so that pupate, when it pupates, it shrinks too. Yeah, he shrinks down to that little white pupa um, that yeah. we shot here earlier, and he's only that for a couple weeks, and then he emerges as a beetle that's like kind of light colored or yellowish, and then they'll turn black over the course of two weeks, and that's a good indicator because once they're black and two weeks old, they will start mating. Mm, and so you can tell by color of the beetle when they're ready to start mating. That's when they start going crazy. Mm -hmm. And then when you start seeing the beetles burrow down, that's the females going down to lay the eggs after they mated. Yes. And then they come back up to the surface and hide and eat and hang out. Yes. Perfect. Cool. Um, out of my, I've got three of them that are just a full life cycle, all mm -hmm. just mealworms. I started pulling out like the biggest ones I could find and just tossing them in a bin and letting them do their full cycle. And so sure enough, not only are the beetles bigger, they're a little bit more active and ferocious, um, but then it, it creates a bigger mealworm hmm. that are also a little bit more active and a little bit more confident, um, which I thought was fascinating. But again, you're still waiting, um, you know, they, they said it like eight to ten weeks is the average, but they really hit, from my experience, in about three to four weeks of feeding them good wheat bran that is easily digestible, not oats or the other, mm -hmm. you know, grains that people will give them. Uh, they just, it's kind of like gut loading a duck. They just go through and eat as much as they can. They get full size uh, within about three to four weeks. And so I took an ice tray because they can't really climb up out of anything. And I just popped them in there and the biggest ones that I'd find, I just put in an ice tray. And then I left the ice tray down in the bin like that. And, and so when they don't have any food or anywhere to go or no one else, they actually did um, turn into a pupa. And so then those, when they were pupas, I put them into this one by themselves. And I had some really Whoa. weird results. Yeah, so these are our are normal size mealworms and you can see the size of the beetles here normal size beetles there we can take the slit off here and and the size of the mealworms you know about like that and so we'll compare that to the large ones you know they're about double especially in girth and the beetles are about 50 percent bigger well then when i pulled out the biggest of the big mealworms forced them with an ice tray then the beetles are just massive. In fact, they're so funny. They sit on their back most of the time. Like, they'll grab on usually, but it's like they're so big, they're not even used to... They don't even know what to do. <laughs> but, um, yeah, compared to, like... <laughs> compared to a normal beetle. Yeah, let me find just a normal beetle. I mean, it's not even close. You couldn't even tell they're the it's same... Like three times bigger. Yeah, and slow and and everything and so it's the same species just selective but breeding right i there. selective yeah selectively pulled out the biggest ones i forced them in four weeks instead of eight weeks to pupate they come out as a beetle and they're all i mean this guy's even bigger and wow. i mean they're just huge and so they eat or they eat slower they kind of walk around slower everything about them slower and, and uh they get, constantly get stuck on their back which is hilarious but I'm curious to see what ends up happening out of this. Because I did have, a, uh, when I did it on a smaller batch, I had one, had some mealworms in here that were really big. And I, I thought, I somehow, I threw like a super worm in. I pulled it out and I thought it was a super worm. And then I went to go put it in my super worm bed. And I was looking at them, and, but super worms, oh, yep have totally different coloring black stripes yeah the, the the really black stripes like he's crawling backwards right here yeah, but um 
it was different coloring, but almost as big. And that's when it dawned on me, I'm like, that isn't a superworm. It's just selectively bred and had bigger and bigger... Giant mealworms. Yeah, giant mealworms. And so I threw him back in an ice tray and popped him in here, and he turned into a beetle. What are these little... So chunks? that is moisture. So if, if you put too much moisture, it'll go into this, and it'll clump up, and they suck all the moisture out, and it kind of leaves it glued together. All it huh. is is wheat bran. So that is actually just like your little Nutri-Grain bars, kind of, right? <laughs> yeah, instead of, totally. Instead of glued together with honey, it's glued together with mealworm spit. <laughs> Nutritious. Yeah, and if you left too much moisture in, it, it will mold. Um, but I oh, just yeah. I just dry it out and then throw it in my vermicomposting bin. Uh, just like I do all these scraps, vermicomposting bin. And then eventually... Like once I pull out all the mealworms or whatever, if a bin is getting kind of nasty or whatever, after you know a couple of years, um, I'll get out all the wor get out all the mealworms that I can with like a little cat litter box scoop, and put them aside in a new bin, and then just take everything and dump it in a vermicompost. Hmm. So and, that's what you do with all the castings and the old wheat bran. Yep, because all that's going to end up compost anyways. But then the worms finish off the wheat bran. They finish off all the the dead. I mean, you can't even see the People always talk about how when they molt, you get the little the little, little skin. Exoskeleton kind of. And if you leave it be and stop mixing it, like everyone shows people doing, um, they'll actually work that to the bottom. Interesting. Um, or even break it up, because I can't even, it's hard to even find it. So so the other part of this, too, um, tell us about the castings, how nutritious they are, what people do with them. Yeah. So the, the castings off of a mealworm are very different than like a a, a plant-based compost or a manure-based compost or even vermicompost. Vermicompost is going to be really dense and really wet um, but cold so you can put it straight on plants. Uh, a manure compost heats up and there's like I think 16 different bacterias that are gonna thrive and if it's really hot there's like Missouri Organics uses like two or three that they specialize in but it's super hot kills everything else the cool thing about mealworms is the castings um, are cold from the get-go you can put it directly on the root system of a plant you can mix it in with a fluffy soil and it's completely dry so you get to choose the moisture content of your soil uh, by mm -hmm. adding you know it's easier to add in dry and then water than it is to add in a wet or hot compost uh, or worm castings and then have to dry it out with something right and so it's it's a great fertilizer and then so why do you okay so like explain why um, if if they're getting kind of messy mm -hmm. why you would put all that into a vermicompost bin would the worms composting that turn it into like a super compost <laughs> just a thought um, <laughs> yeah that's a good question and I played around with that like, like I, a combination I've, of mealworm casting yeah and, Red Wiggler casting or whatever? I have sifted out um, like just the absolute uh, mealworm castings from the wheat bran and put it in different sides of a worm bin and they typically leave that alone. Oh. I mean their moving around is going to mix it in with the rest of the worm castings but the reason I do that is the, uh, the Red Wigglers will go in and finish off all the leftover wheat bran because I don't necessarily want just rotting wheat bran right at the root system of a small plant that you potted or something like that. If you're mm -hmm. throwing it in your garden, doesn't matter. Or in a large established plant, yeah, you can just chuck it in there. And natural worms will come up and eat it or whatever. Yeah, um, hmm. yeah but that's cool. I've got so much compost with all of our other composting things. <laughs> we just chuck it in and use it all together. That might be a future video where we mix the the wheat bran and the castings together with a, a wiggler farm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A vermicompost farm. And these grow indoors. Like you can tell, there's no odor. Yeah, there really, there really is no odor. That was, guys, that was my concern for actually not wanting to place one of these in my house and start a bin, was because you know reptile bins and stuff sometimes they get stinky. I mean, I don't smell a thing. I don't even smell the wheat bran. So, and my nose works. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And yeah, you can look back to uh, our other video about vermicomposting. People have the same concerns about like worm bins yeah. inside their kitchen. If you do it right and just weekly checking on it and altering a little bit, like putting in drier stuff that, or wetter stuff, mm -hmm. keep the moisture content. I don't even put holes in the bottom. I don't put holes in the side. Um, 
just once you get the hang of it, it's so easy. Yeah. Um, you don't have to do all the, the cleaning and sifting and sorting and all that stuff. Um, and then these guys, a lot of people will wear like an N95 mask, which I do recommend because an odd thing that happens, about 50% of people that work with mealworms a lot will become allergic to them. Hmm. And I do wear them if I'm like dumping stuff or changing like a, a big bin or just working in it a lot. Like I was saying, I was picking out little ones and doing scientific, I don't know, experiments. I'll put on N95 for that. Um, and you'll start smelling it when you start mixing them and f doing stuff that you're going to see like in other how-to videos. Um, absolutely wear a mask uh, for, in that scenario. But if you're not mixing it, that's why you're not smelling it. Yeah. Um, nothing is super wet. And this is like a fresh orange. Um, and it's dry to the touch. They've sucked it all off the surface. Mm. But like if we crack that open. Still got some moisture. And put it in here. Even put it down in the, the wheat bran like everyone says not to do. Um, they'll come at that and eat it first, and that's what will turn into, like the wheat bran around it will turn into a clump like that, but they'll suck that dry as well. Oh, that's where you get the Nutri-Grain bars. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, yeah, as long as you let leave it there long enough, they'll suck it dry too, and it's not going to mold, and you don't have that issue, and you don't have the smell, hmm. because they really are ferocious. Um, so, yeah, you guys, I've... Like I said, I'm, I'm so new to this, but I'm nerding out really hard right now because this is so cool. I'm just seeing all the stages and seeing uh, how easy it is, how cheap it is to do this. And when you, sometimes you go online, you watch all these videos and you get kind of blown back by trying to set up everything and get costs together and then it might discourage you. Well, doing it this way, it's cheap, easy, effective. You don't even have to change anything. Why wouldn't you do it? You know, if you have reptiles or fish or something, yeah. Way, why wouldn't you do it this way? You know. Yeah, and fifty pounds for eight dollars on that, a buck per little box. You only need it a couple inches above the wheat bran, um, because they, in any form, they can't jump, fly, climb up a plastic tub, um, and then five bucks at any basic pet store will get you a hundred live mealworms. Mm -hmm. And and then they just reproduce like crazy once they hit the beetle stage. And I mean, look, I mean, look how easy this is. You put your dry or your wet uh, peels or whatever from your fruits or vegetables in there. Make sure you said it's not acidic, right? Or, uh, no, these guys will eat peppers. anything. Nope, they don't care. Oh. It's, it's vermicompost. Red vermicompost. wigglers don't like the hot peppers or citrus. So like these orange peels, okay. I'm gonna throw outside, and the earthworms eat them. I don't want them in my like really controlled vermicompost bins because that's what makes worms climb out the red wigglers yeah. will climb up but um, these guys will eat they'll eat a cheeseburger they'll eat a carrot they don't care so whether you eat healthy or unhealthy <laughs> you can put your stuff in there and they'll take care of it and apparently if i tell them the the most mysterious thing that we've ever heard about these guys yeah so they just found out recently that what you can do and i've played with this actually we can kind of this isn't on point but um you can actually get them going strong separate them from all the wheat bran the meal worms and starve them basically for 24 hours and then throw in styrofoam and they will eat the styrofoam and the bacteria in their gut will actually break it down and then there's a different acid as they excrete it that comes out and it leaves um compounds that are actually biodegradable and so another reason, that's another reason why I throw them in with the vermicompost because then the red wigglers break that down even more and there's not even a trace of petroleum or anything in the soil and we're, we've just got a, a large grant for soil testing and a spectrometer and so we'll be playing with that in future videos as well uh, because the red wigglers break down like over 90% of antibiotics that are in there wow. um, or the bacteria that are in uh, meat eating animals feces get broke down and so using all of nature's composters together uh, you can break down some crazy stuff like styrofoam in plastic bags yeah they'll eat it up and like these guys are even eating <laughs> they're eating paper they're eating right through the paper and they got tons of wheat bran and potatoes they're i don't even know why they're doing it just for fun probably and see we i mean 
I'm not saying we shouldn't do it, but we spend millions, billions of dollars on solutions and technologies to rid our environment of these things that we also participate in. But I mean, look at nature's solution. Look what God's given us already. And it's like, what if we focused on this instead of, you know, using man-made stuff? It's like, maybe that's the solution to these things. Who knows? Yeah. I recently, I was looking up, I think I just Googled uh, mealworm life cycle and it popped up and the first thing on Google was the answer, but it was, the website was Orkin, the pest control company. And they were trying to sell pest control things and they said that mealworms are inv highly invasive um, and they're uncontrollable because they fly from field to field. They can't fly. I mean, that's just straight up a lie. And it specifically said mealworms, showed pictures of them, the yeah. life cycle and like how out of control they are. And that's why you need to spray your yards and kill off mealworms. You're not going to find mealworms out here. They die yeah. in the winter. Um, so and that's a huge company with a huge marketing and R&D department. And they have that kind of oversight. Yeah. It sounds it, like they went to Google and just grabbed a picture. Oh, <laughs> well, they had a, I, I even clicked and read the article. Like I was so shocked that they even got away with that as the official Google answer. Wow. Uh, yeah, I reported it. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, we'll uh, have future videos uh, to come about more selective breeding. We're going to see how how much bigger we can get these yeah. giant mealworms uh, by just pulling out the largest of the batch and keep force uh, forcing them into pupate stage and then hatching them out into beetles and then babies. And I mean, we might be able to get them to superworm size. Yeah, I, my goal is to get That'd mealworms cool. as big as superworms that you don't have to separate to get them to pupate. Doing some Jekyll and Hyde experiments here. Mm -hmm. Oh, before we go, why don't we Make start the new, the new bin? Cool. I'm excited for this part, all right. guys. Cool. So, all right, so now we're going to prep and make a mealworm bin for Nick to take home. Yes. I'm excited about this. And we're kind of, we're going to do this in a couple different ways. Uh, for you guys, basically all you have to do is get this wheat bran, and any good feed store uh, will have it, uh, especially like out in the country. Like I, I think ours is like 20 minutes out of the, like out in the country where they're going to feed it to the horses, and that's where you get the $8.50 pound bag of wheat bran. Uh, I don't use rolled oats or anything like that because it's hard to sift through. They also have a hard time eating it. If you mix them, they're only going to eat the wheat bran. They don't touch the rolled oats mm. unless they're starving. So, yeah, if you're making one at home, just get some wheat bran. And you can put it in any plastic container. It doesn't have to be black. It doesn't matter. They really don't care. Just fill it up how much? You said about a couple cups or? Yeah, I mean, basically you want it to be enough where they can burrow down a bit. Um, I'll probably even do one more. You want... The most important thing is you want there to be, I'd give it two inches of plastic so they can't climb out. Hmm. Even an inch will probably suffice, um, but then a couple inches or an inch or so of this, you don't want it less than an inch because that way it gives it the natural ability for the castings to go down uh, when they molt for all of that to be broken down and drop below because they'll naturally just bring this wheat bran back up. And then if you bought some from a store, you can just put them right here in it. And um, and then I always just put a little piece of like napkin, paper towel down and smaller so they can't, it doesn't go up the edge so they can't crawl out. But that just gives them a little hiding spot like these guys have. Yeah. Um, they like to hide under that. But then you can also put your um, fresh fruits, whatever you have. Uh, Nick brought some carrots, and so we're gonna add that to it. Levi was saying how cute this was because I cut them up. I didn't yeah. know you had you could just throw a whole carrot in there. I thought that'd be too much, but. <laughs> yeah, he cut them up in these cute little sizes. I care about these little guys. I'd take a carrot and just snap in half and chuck the whole thing in. <laughs> uh, and then, and, that, and there's a re logic to that. This is already dry, and it hasn't even been given to them. Um, if you put a big carrot, or I even take the oranges and just make a little crack like that, and they'll eat their way through it, but it keeps it keeps moisture there for like a week. Yeah. You know, same thing with a potato. When I do a potato, kind of suck it dry like, from the outside. They're end. slowly doing it, and they'll eat through that to get into the moisture once they're hungry enough. Yeah. And but it keeps moisture available without rotting 
the wheat bran. And so this is, I mean, it's fine. You could put it right in it at this point, but if it's super wet, you want it right there on top of the paper. Um, but for practical purposes, um, since we don't have any store-bought ones, I'm actually gonna give them a start. So this has every stage of life in it. It has the beetles. So for Nick's bin, we're actually just gonna start with the, the wheat bran and then these two, this is the normal size ones with their full life cycle in here. Uh, there's eggs, there's beetles, there's larvae. This is the large ones that I've separated out that also have their full life cycle, eggs, beetles, and larvae. And so I'm just gonna get Nick started with a little bit of all of it. And I'm just gonna try to get the bottom, middle, top, everything. Yes. And add it in here. Yes. Now, now that I think about it, I'm gonna take some of this wheat ran out so we have room. Give it back to these guys. This is just the virgin wheat bran. Guys, leave this up to Levi the professional. I'm glad so, I'm not doing it. Here's some beetles. <laughs> so give it, starting it off with beetles. Now they're going to be laying their eggs. Here's the mealworms in there. There's eggs already in here, and there's probably tiny, tiny little microscopic mealworms that we can't even see. Uh, and so this, you just cut off, you know, a solid eight or four to eight months of waiting for them to all be pupa, all be beetles, mature, start laying eggs, the month of it, the eggs getting ready to hatch, and then a month of the, the mealworms getting to a usable size. Um, by starting with a full life cycle already established, now you're immediately already going to have babies that are growing right now, uh, beetles are already laying eggs, at you know, because they're fully mature. Um, and I've already got so many of these bins. We'll just do a bunch of it. <laughs> nice. Look at this, guys. I'm having. All right. Starting with a good selection there of. And then when you get vitals, and then once like this is uh, quite a bit here because I just add them in. Um, I'd advise as big of a tub as you want that you're comfortable with. If you want to do a huge thing, you can have a, a small amount of beetles. It doesn't matter. They're gonna lay eggs according to their space, mm. and and so it's really up to you. I like a movable, so I've got like three identical. Full cycle, full life cycle bins that are the same size side by side, and they're pretty equally divvied up. Full life cycle. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So instead of one big bin, I've got three shallow little ones. I can move them, stack them. I can put them under a bed, whatever I want to do. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Instead of having like a big tub. That's awesome. Because they don't need to be tall. Look at that. Look how easy that was. That took and we're thirty done. seconds, and we're yep. done. <laughs> but for real, guys. Um, you know, if, if you're like me, you're probably just getting warmed up to all this. You probably have a lot of questions still. Honestly, as I'm going through this, I'm going to be having a lot more questions. Um, so I'll be, you know, looking at my own research, probably asking this guy because he's got all the answers here. He's been doing it for years. But seriously, ask us some questions that you have in the comments below. Um, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and uh, check us out for future videos. We're not doing just mealworms. We're doing all sorts of stuff over at the greenhouse. We've got water collection stuff going on. Levi's working on a swimming pool right now. We've got tons of stuff going on, so make sure you follow us. Um, it, it's going to be coming out pretty regularly, so follow along. And if you want to come check us out in Kansas City on site, stop by. We'd love to have you there, right? Yep, anytime. Right. Peace out.